Well, more than 200,000 Americans are drawn into a religious cult every year, and my next guest says she experienced it firsthand. Joining me now is Yolande Brenner, the author of Holy Candy. She was a member of the Unification Church, led by the Reverend Sun Young Moon. The church arranged her marriage, was promised eternal solutions to all of her problems, and she soon found out the church wasn't what she thought it was. Yolande, welcome. It's good to have you on the program. It's good to be here. I, yeah, I'm always curious about how people are drawn into cults. How did it happen to you? Well, I was doing research for a video project I was working on called Soul Searching, and I met a man who was working for the Unification Church, teaching at the Principal Study Center. In London. In London, right. And he gave me a card which had these questions on, such as, what is the purpose of life? Does true love exist? And he basically told me that I would be able to find the answers to the three big problems that I felt I had in my life, which were that my brother was schizophrenic, he said if I joined and dedicated my life to God, then God would heal my brother. Also, I was not satisfied in my love relationships. And he promised me that if I dedicated my life to God, I would come to understand what true love really is. Also, I felt that I was living a selfish life. I wanted to do something to help the plight of mankind. I felt like I wanted to do something to create a better world. And misguided as that may have been, he also promised me that if I dedicated my life to God from then on, then I would begin to create a better world. How long did it take for you to join? It happened in less than two weeks. I uh, went and started studying, and after a few days, I started to feel only safe when I was in the church center. And You worked? I, I was working. You gave them your money? I gave him everything that I had at the time, and then after that, I started to go out fundraising, which was what really... What's the mission in the church? We've got, we've got some pictures, and you, know, you were you had an arranged marriage. Um, you were you were married to someone you didn't know. That's correct. And for how long? How long was I married to him for? Um, I was married for about fourteen years in total. I lived with him for about twelve years. What was your, what was your life like? Uh, when I married my husband, for the first two years, we were not allowed to have a sexual relationship. So during that time, I continued my church missions of fundraising and witnessing, trying to bring people into the church. How long was it before you got some sense that this is not the right, this is something's wrong going on here? To be honest, I didn't allow myself to have any questions about it, because at that time, I had left my country, I'd left my family and friends, and I had developed a series of patterns whereby I would stop myself from questioning whether this was the right thing to do. If I started a question, I thought I was letting Satan come into my mind, so I would do, I would punish myself by fasting, by giving myself a cold shower condition, by praying more intensely, by sleeping less. So I didn't really question it until things started to fall apart outside of me. Were there other people questioning it? Were there other people leaving? Did you see that happen or not? I knew that it was happening, and I knew that it was happening even in Reverend Moon's family. I knew that people were doubting whether this was really true. But again, I didn't allow that to be a question to me. You, you can understand. People People think, I, I, I mean, I think, if it could happen to you, it could happen to anybody. Is that is that fair or not? I definitely think it could happen to anybody. I think if you find anybody in a vulnerable moment when they're searching, perhaps somebody close to them is ill or dying, perhaps they're questioning their own life, then I think that they definitely could be drawn to this type of organization. So what sort of warnings do you have for folks about... Uh, were, you, were you religious before this happened? I was not religious. I think I had spiritual beliefs, and I was definitely searching for an answer to the questions I had about life. So, so what sort of warnings do you have for people who might be drawn in or might be susceptible? I would just say always keep questioning everything and always trust your own inner guidance. Don't ever let anybody lay down rules for what is right and what is wrong because I think that everybody knows that inside themselves. You had friends that tried to get you out. They tried to, to, uh, to help you escape. Is that yes. right? And they didn't succeed? They did not succeed. No, my, uh, my ex-boyfriend at the time actually came and vandalized the church center in certain ways. He put graffiti on the pavement outside. He super glued the door shut and he tried to come in and other friends of mine tried to come in to get me out. But then within a few months I was sent away and that's how I ended up in New York. So, but eventually you got out because 
there was no actual moment that I got out, to be honest, because I was dedicated to staying in the marriage eternally. But when my husband left, then I realized that these things that I had dedicated my life to were no longer true, that they never had been true, that this wasn't an eternal marriage, it wasn't going to last forever, that I hadn't saved my brother, that after 15 years he was still schizophrenic, and that the world had not changed, it had not gotten better. So I had to accept the fact that these things I believed were no longer true, that they never had been true. How's your life now? My life is good now. My life, as everybody's life is, is up and down. I make choices. I don't always make good choices. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's wonderful. I'm just so happy that I have the freedom to make my own decisions because I think that's what life is about. Life has changed. Life is movement. Sometimes it hurts, but that's good because that's what life is. It's a fascinating story. You're the author of the book called Holy Candy. It's great to see you here, and thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for having me. Good luck to you.